Russ and the West Ham Network. <laughs> hey, so I did there. Hope you're all safe and well. If you're new around here, where the hell have you been? But thanks for joining us. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button or in the, uh, the cheeky bell to make sure you're notified of any time we put any content on. And afterwards, give it a cheeky comment. Positive, negative. Let me know your thoughts. Um, obviously, today we had our um, we've had a few shows already. We had um, Sean Curtis from um, Head of Sport for the Sun talking about the preview um, of the Newcastle game with Will from We Are West Ham podcast, and we had the lunchtime show, uh, the the club call phone in, and we've had a, a, a show about Will Still. Who is Will Still? Man, he seems to be taking West Ham Twitter by storm at the moment. So check that out. And so goes into a bit more information about who he is. And um, we'll have tonight. Also, we have Irish Tommy, the Late Late Show with Irish Tommy. That'll be on tonight. So make sure you check that out. But today we have got the press conference, as I said, in association with Football London. Um, as always, John T. Coleman, our roaming reporter um, from Football London, has uh, done a little video, a little instant reaction from the press conference. Obviously, there's two sides of the press conference. Um, you have have the what's the, the public version and then you have the embargoed section and so the, the embargo the public section was about uh, about two o'clock Moisey was late 20 minutes late or so for the press conference and then um he has the embargo section which comes out later i think it's half 10 tonight uh, uk time so keep an eye on the football under website and also on john t's twitter at john t coleman but let's head over to john t now and he can give us his thoughts of how he thought the uh, the press conference went hello everyone at the west Ham network john t coleman here from football london um sat in the car as usual but um not actually at rush green today um and i'm not out of the game tomorrow but i have listened to all the press conference so i thought i'd do a quick video for you just sort of recapping all the key points the main thing to come really from it is um is team news uh danny ings has a chance uh for tomorrow i think um he sounds like he's recovering quicker than expected i don't think we expected him back until chelsea at the earliest but tottenham was more likely so there is a chance no guarantee but a chance he's in the squad tomorrow which is pretty good uh, fingers crossed he is, you know, obviously with um, Gianluca Scamacca out injured as well, it leaves Antonio as the only senior striker available at present. So if things are available, you know, that would be a boost for, for West Ham. But the fact that he's even close is um, is good news. Um, on the rest of the injury, Scamacca's still out. Uh, Max Cornier is still out. He did return to Rush Green at the start of the week for an assessment. But uh, has not gone back to France. I think um, that's where the uh, specialist for his injury is. And he's spent a lot of time there recently. So he's back there. But I think he's progressing in the right way. Which, I mean, we haven't seen him for four months. So any, I suppose any encouraging news is good news uh, on him. Um, who is the other one? I'm trying to think. Kurt Zuma, again, also out for tomorrow. So, although that's not really much of a surprise. Uh, in his press conference, David Boys um, was asked a bit um, on a few little areas, asked about how much they're missing Kurt Zuma at the minute. I think, you know, if you probably look at rec West Ham's record with and without him, I don't think it's much of a coincidence that their worst form was sort of first, those first couple of games after Christmas where Zuma was out injured. Um, he was also asked about Flynn Downs, who we saw... In the FA Cup win over Derby, and I thought he had a pretty good game actually next to Thomas Suchet. In fact, I thought they both had a good game in midfield on Monday night. Um, so a bit more on that. Um, yeah, he's also asked a bit about Newcastle. Uh, of course, they reached the uh, Carabao Cup final this week uh, with a win over Southampton over two legs. Um, so yeah, he's asked a bit about that. Also, Harrison Ashby recently left West Ham. Uh, to join Newcastle. Moyes said, you know, you did really want to keep him. And for a personal note, obviously he's a young Scottish player and for Moyes, you know, that gave him sort of extra incentive to want to keep him, but um, was unable to. So, so yeah, um, that was kind of it really from the um, the live section. Probably a few little details I've missed out, but in general, that's kind of all the key points. The full transcript from that will be available pretty shortly, although I don't know when this video will go out, but it, it, there's a good chance it'll already be live on Football London by the time it does. So, so go check that out um so yeah we'll have the uh, live live uh, section in full very shortly also a, be a, a bit from the uh, embargo section at 10 30 tonight um, and perhaps some more tomorrow on the website ahead of kickoff at 5 30 uh, i'm not there but my colleague michael much is on our behalf um so yeah as, as always stay tuned to the live blog press conference live blog after the game player ratings all that kind of thing um and yeah you know 
it's good news that West Ham have won back to back games, you know. I think just for morale, really, more than anything. Obviously, the Everton win was big in the league, but I think, you know, that win at Derby avoids a cup upset, and that would have really demoralised everything, you know. It's just getting that winning feeling back. This three game run's really tough. If they go and get anything at Newcastle, especially with the four mayor in it at a minute, it would be a really good result. And, you know, add confidence ahead of um, facing Chelsea uh, at home next Saturday lunchtime. And interesting stuff from John T as per usual. Thank you very much, Mr. Coleman. As always, loving your work. What we'll do now is we'll go back into the public section and talk a little bit about what was said. Um, going into sort of what was what you said in terms of some of the questions and in terms of we sort of categorised them and put things in together. Um, most pressing, the injury news. Uh, that's obviously, and, and John T made, uh, made reference to that. But in terms of what he said, he said, let's go full screen. He said, basically, Danny is doing quite well and has a chance for tomorrow. Uh, Gianluca is not available. Zuma not available. Corne not available. All of them are getting better. I can't give any exact, which I spelt wrong, dates on any. And and that that to me is something which actually was picked up on by a few people in the in the live show on at lunchtime. In terms of, it, there's never any there's never any dates, is there? You know, and it tends to be you know you only be out for one two weeks. And Cornet's boot was only out, going to be out for one or two weeks. It's been out for four months. Um, but good news about Ings potentially. Obviously, Scomac had his third injection in his knee is his medicine injection which mixes with his blood um that's how it was explained to me um so he had his last one of a course of three um so clearly not available for saturday but maybe maybe next week maybe next week um good news on danny ings potentially um just as another option i don't think he'll start um but he'll be on the bench i imagine if he can be and um, just to give us another bit of firepower which we've which we've needed on the um on the discussion of corner in a bit more detail a questions were asked about you know he just come back from injuries he's turned up on Monday from three or four weeks in France with his specialist, um, asked about how he thought he was getting on. He says, we never expected him to be back just yet. We were hoping he would be, um, but obviously they were hoping, but not expecting. Um, needs to get more pitch work. He's not feeling his calf muscle anymore, which is good. He's about 60 or 70%. So based on that, you would assume he'd at least be in the squad for the Chelsea game next week. He is hoping. I think he'll be like a brand new signing. Me and Anton have said it quite a lot. You know, it's almost like he will be a new signing. We've hardly had him in the, in the side this year. And when he has, he's, he's, he's played well. Obviously, the Chelsea game, actually, ironically, was that his last game? It must be one of his last games was that Chelsea game um, at Stamford Bridge early in the season and when obviously he scored and he got VAR'd out and all that type of thing. So fingers crossed some green, green shoots on the um, on the Cornet front. In terms of obviously recent form, we go on the back of two wins, two, two nil defeat, two, 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 two nil victories, two clean sheets, two goals in each, obviously, albeit against Derby and Everton. But, you know, you have to play. You've got to beat us in front of you, as I always say. Moisey was asked a question about the recent form. He says, win against Derby was a boost. Clean sheet was good. We got a great win against Everton. Want to build on that. We have a good side. Not showing it as much as we have done. Getting close to the business end of the season. Um, last few games have given us something to talk about. It's great to see Jared scoring again. Winning is always key. We'd like performances to improve. Now, at the moment, we have to pick up points, hopefully moving in the right direction. I think that's why a lot of people have looked at this game, the Newcastle game particularly, as, as a sort of, is it the litmus test? Yes, a litmus test uh, in terms of whether this is a flash in the pan, these last this little upturn we've had in the last two weeks, or whether it is something more significant. And I think actually after the Newcastle game, based on you know the outcome, for me, it's not necessarily about performance now. It's about getting the points because that's what we need. We need points to make sure we stay in this league first. Then I think we can then have some sort of understanding of what we could expect in the next after this game the next couple of games obviously Chelsea Spurs we've got Forest obviously we've got the fifth round of the Carabao Cup as well um and then we've got we're going into March and we'll have 9th and 16th being the Europa Conference um last 16 games as well so then we start getting into you know two week territory for a little bit in March as well um asked about our opponents Newcastle obviously we had Kendall um on last night Really, really good chat with her. She's proper, like, on it. She's a really good pundit, I think. Um, 
uh, in terms of Newcastle. And, uh, you know, obviously some some great success. They, they're through to the final of the uh, the Cabell Cup. And Moyes was asked specifically about Newcastle. And he said, you know, great effort from Newcastle and Eddie Howe. Congrats to them. Hope they had plenty of Newcastle brown ale. That's a little bit racist, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> It's the assumption that everyone in Newcastle drinks brown now. Oh, there you go, Moisey. Um, <laughs> are you joking? But yeah, it's, I mean, you know, there, there's no denying Newcastle have, uh, have, have, have done really well, you know, and, and albeit not at the, I think everyone was assuming when they were taken over that it was going to be loads of money spent. And, you know, they haven't spent huge amounts of money at all, really. Um, when you look at the squad, look at the players they brought in, and they've actually got a number of injuries. You know, you've got someone like Dan Byrne, who's, you know, a, a huge colossus of a centre-back. He's been playing he's been playing left-back from this season, or for a big chunk of this season. They haven't gone out and got a left-back to to replace, you know, to, to bring in a left-back, which is surprising, really. And even with the appointment of, of Eddie Howe and the maintaining of Eddie Howe as the manager, you know, that that's a different outlook it's similar to Chelsea really in terms of Graham Potter you know when when uh when when the Americans bought when Todd bought out um Abramovich you know you assumed that they were going to go for a you know Galatico manager but we're going with Potter you get it just show it's more of a, a coach role rather than necessarily a name manager um which is quite you know it's, it's quite good to see particularly you know these game these these sides taking over these um the, these clubs now obviously we've got you know, to talk about Ashby having signed for Newcastle on the transfer deadline day, chances are he's going to probably be in the squad um, with um, what's his name? Um, Marquillo. Marquillo. He is, he, he got injured in training, I think um, the day before the Carabao Cup uh, or something like that, or just after. So the chances are he will be on the, probably on the bench and maybe even Craig Dawes, Craig Gordon, Craig, no, Craig Dawson, Craig, what's his face? Gordon, Anthony Gordon, that's it. <laughs> Anthony Gordon um, will uh, probably feature heavily as well, particularly about Bruno. We don't need to talk about Bruno. No, 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 because he's not playing because he's suspended. Asked about Ashby. Um, and obviously he's asked several questions about Ashby because obviously it's, it was quite pertinent with the Newcastle game. He was like, I was hoping he would stay, but we couldn't get him to stay. We were always going to find it difficult. I like him. We just couldn't get couldn't get a way of keeping him. Maybe play him in the first team. Or you put him in the first team squad. Just, just, just an idea. Just as an idea or anything. I'm not bitter, but uh, that there's there's going to be lots of noise around that. I think this weekend because of obviously that and Ashby. And speaking about Ashby and obviously a lot of youth team players being moved on. We've got Tony Carr on the on the channel next Wednesday night, at nine p.m. Um, talking about the academy more detail. Give you guys an opportunity to ask questions. You know, try and get some. Some opinions, no, get some clarity, get some thoughts from obviously someone who is Mr. Academy and he was a 50 years man and boy. So I think it'd be a really interesting show next Wednesday. So make sure you're you're there for that. Make sure they're there. Obviously, uh, going up to Newcastle, it opens again another another chapter in Moise's sto- story, uh, his managerial story in terms of Sunderland. And uh, Arsenal, if he'll get some stick and he'll say, basically, yeah, you manage Arsenal, you manage Arsenal, you manage Sunderland, you expect that. And so stick from both sides, both sides, Newcastle and the West Ham fans as well, if we don't perform well indeed. But uh, yeah, it's... Um, it's like when Fat Frank comes to comes to West Ham, isn't it? Although thankfully, not anymore for the time being. Now, one player he was asked about specifically, and, and I think John T did allude to it in his little video, was Flynn Downs, and that's a pair, you know a player that we've all wanted to see play uh, a lot more. Um, I think he brings a lot to the game, which I think would really suit the way we're playing at the moment. Asked about Flynn specifically, he he was he was quoted in saying that basically I think Flynn has come on. He's played really well against Liverpool and Man United. He's improving and hopefully he goes on to be a good player. And obviously, you know, the cutoff point is when when's that when's that improvement? When's he going to get improved if you don't play him? And and so I think someone like Flynn, it's the same argument really as, as the youth team ones. You know, the, there's, there's a guy there who's, you know, maybe more dynamic as a midfielder than maybe a Suchek. Obviously, he doesn't got the physicality, but in terms of what we're doing at the moment, the way we're playing, it's quite sort of, you know, not say ticky tacky, but they're trying to play a slightly more p- 
passing game, I'd say, you know, the likes of Paqueta and, and Declan Rice and, and definitely Emerson. And, and even when Ben Rama came on uh, over the, um, on the, in midweek, you know, the, the, the football was a lot better in my, you know, in terms of the passing and, you know, some people put like, did like, a Twitter click at Moyes ball and it was like 30 passes. And then it went out to Ben Johnson. He flicked it across and obviously we didn't score. Um, but, Flynn, I, I, he's got to get. He's, oh, I, I, I say it all the time. I'd love him. I'd love him to get a decent run out because I think he deserves it, and 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 should be breaking into this side um, just for his energy and the fact also he's a West Ham boy as well. So for me, it's always good to have a West Ham boy on the on the on the pitch just because you know you're you're you're, you're sure that he'll be putting it in because it's his club, and that's what we obviously had when Mark was in was in the playing side. Um, and obviously now, obviously him in more of a senior role in the club, you think he'd have the same attitude towards business decisions and, and recruitment decisions and academy decisions in terms of the benefit of the club. Um, and then lastly, obviously we had the um, we had David Gogg's funeral this week at the London Stadium, and the procession went sort of back and forth from um, what was the bowling. <laughs> um to his house at 442 Green Street. Um all the way back to the London Stadium. It was uh, you know, there was, you did have seen there's some videos they did of it, and there was I mean Slav was there and there was a load of ex players and current players and and obviously a lot of staff members as well. Um and asked about that. He he said it was uh it was brilliant. It was a brilliant service, had lots of humor, lots of good moments, and the send-off he got was great. And you know, and despite whatever you know, whatever you think about the 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 regime there um you know david gold was you know my my experience of david gold was always very nice always very pleasant always very chatty loved to talk about west ham was a west ham fan um and there's again there ain't in the same way there wasn't many club captains who were west who were managed who were fans of that particular club like martin noble there's not many owners now who are fans of their clubs and so all outright not become fans because they've bought the club and, and, and David Gold was one of them. As I said, he, he lived across the road. So it's a, a, obviously, an, and, you know, went into his 80s. So he had a good innings, as they say. And um, it looked like a, a quite a um, quite a funny uh, service. As you could probably imagine from him, he's, he's, he's always, he was always quite a cheeky man. Um, anyway, and that's it. So I hope you enjoy it. As I said, keep an eye over to Irish Tommy. Uh, he'll be doing his Late Late Show tonight. Um, we'll also have, uh, I think we'll have Holly doing her tweet all about it. Uh, that'll be out this weekend. Obviously, we'll have the preview of the um, Predicted 11. Uh, that'll be going out tomorrow. We'll have the watch-alongs. We'll have the review show. We'll have, what else? We have the final word, the five things we learned, the ratings on Monday, all that stuff. And then, as I said, we've got Tony Khan next Wednesday. So keep an eye out for that. That's going to be really, really interesting. And until then, my friends, hope you have a nice weekend. Hope West Ham don't ruin it. How they make it better for a change. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? For a change, it'd be lovely. Um, take care, stay safe, stay warm, stay humble, keep the faith, and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>